playing the Radical Latino Show. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands in the air for New York's very own. Latino is taking you to another level. Hello, my people. Welcome back to another episode of the Radical Latino Show. It's your host, the Radical Latino, back at Bodega Bean Studios. You feel what I'm saying? Um, how was y'all week? My week has been crazy all over the place. Got a couple of interviews, and actually, I only had one interview. Um, it's gonna be released later on this week. Hope you guys enjoy it. You know, um, interviewed somebody very special. You know what I'm saying? Um, it was a really great, great interview. You know what I mean? He's very controversial and all that. And, you know, me me and him had a really great discussion. You know what I'm saying? So, I uh, hope you guys enjoy that. Um, updates, updates, updates. I'm seeing a lot of people hitting me up on Twitter and Instagram saying that they like the episodes and all that. I know I gotta be a little bit more interactive and start posting up more, but literally I'm like busy all over the place, all over the place almost every time. You know what I'm saying? I still got other plans that I got laid out for future episodes and all that. You know what I'm saying? But I'm seeing people hitting me up, hitting me up, hitting me up. Uh, remember guys, I got a phone number. Just hit the phone number up and uh, y'all can leave the voicemail. You feel what I'm saying? The phone number is down in the description down below. You could hit the show's number up. Y'all could like, you know, leave your voicemail and I'm going to answer. You know what I'm saying? Also, um, I'm not really going to touch on the YouTube video I saw about somebody talking like wow shit about me and all that. Um, somebody sent it to me. You feel what I'm saying? Um, it's like... It's like kind of weird to find. You feel, you know what I'm saying? Like I had to like really like dig to find the shit. Um, but somebody sent it to me directly or whatever. And you know, I saw it. I'm not really going to talk too much about it, but um, I see you, homie. Uh, you know what I mean? Like I'm going to just leave it the way it is. I'm not even going to say the person's name or shout him out because um, they're irrelevant. It is what it is. It just tells me that I'm you know pretty much I'm doing what I gotta do you feel what I'm saying like I already got haters I didn't even know I was that important to have haters apparently I am you know it is what it is but I got a lot of things planned you know down in the course of all these couple of months and all that um I hope you guys stay tuned you know what I mean and um now let's get into it so the first thing I want to talk about is Murder Mook and Yes Jules. During the week, uh, Murder Mook had just, just, um, Yes Jules on his podcast. First of all, for those who don't know who Murder Mook is or Yes Jules is, don't worry about it. You guys are not missing that much. Um, let me give you guys a little bit of background. I know Murder Mook. You feel what I'm saying? I've seen him almost all the time down in Manhattan. Um, he doesn't live in Harlem anymore. He lives literally in Lower Manhattan. You know what I'm saying? I see. I, I used to see him all the time. You know, I used to salute him. He salute back. You know, it is what it is. He actually knows some of my people. And I know some of his people and all that. I ran into T-Rex literally almost every other day. You know what I'm saying? But I know Murder Moon. I don't know him personally. I just know I just know him through passing. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh yeah, that's the dude that battle rap, yo, what up? You know what I'm saying? Um I'm a huge battle rap, you know, fan and viewer. You know what I'm saying? Um I'm not saying I'm a fucking groupie or all that, but you know, I I attend I attend uh you know events and all that. I mean Actually, in Summer Man is four, I believe. Was it Summer Man is four? Summer Man is three. I forgot which one Loader Lux had that whole uh, um, battle with, with Calico. But 
you actually see me throughout that whole event. You see me in camera. You know what I'm saying? Especially during the the Loader Lux and Calico battle. You see me in camera. Like I'm in, you know, I'm in the crowd and all that. So um yeah, I go to a lot of these events. Especially I went to the one in the barber shop and all that with um JC and uh Chilla Jones. You know what I'm saying? So um you know I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like, a, a, like I'm, I'm big advocate. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I watch it. I, I go to the events and all that. So I know who, I know who Murder Mook is and his, you know, so-called legendary status and, and whatnot. But Yush Jules, I don't know who the fuck this woman is. I don't know nothing about her. I just keep on hearing negative things about her. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what she does. I don't know what, who she is. You know what I'm saying? They said that she's a rapper, but I heard some of her shit. Her shit is basura. You feel what I'm saying? Her shit is trash. And the thing is, Yes Jules was in on Murder Mook's podcast, right? And it went crazy because, um, you know, they were going down the whole laundry list of why they hate why people hate her and all that and all this other stuff. Mind you, first of all, let, I'ma just get one thing straight. Yes, Jules is not a Latin chick, all right? She's Italian and Puerto Rican, all right? She classifies as white, cause she said she's white. You know what I'm saying? Let's let's keep that a hundred right now. I don't wanna hear nothing but no, well, you know, she's white, Latina. No, fuck all that. She's white. She's not a white Latina, she's white, all right? She's a white woman, it's over, that's it end of discussion you feel what i'm saying now during that interview you know they're going back and forth and shit you know there's a couple of things that she lied about that i'm not even going to get into it on why you know they were just going down her whole laundry list of why people hate her and all that other shit right first time ever seeing who this yes jules girl is she looks basic as fuck she looks like a regular white girl like eh, eh, all right whatever you know what i'm saying she said she never had surgery to get her ass done, but there's a lot of photos of her with a flat ass and now she got a fat ass and stuff. All right, whatever. You know, dudes are gonna go crazy over, you know, white women with fat asses. And, all right, it is what it is, right? So she, they're going down the thing and then they go into one topic about the shirt. She tweeted years ago saying that, you know, um, N words be lying. Right, but she didn't say N words. You know, she, you know, the shirt spelled out the whole word. You know, N I G G A, be lying, right? So she tweeted saying, "Yo, should I wear this?" And or whatever the case is, and, you know, people went in. Yo, you out racist and all that other bullshit, right? People went in, respectively, like, hey, they were checking you. You know what I'm saying? But this is where, this is where the shit gets crazy, and. It just goes into like some something extra. You know what I'm saying? While she's saying, yeah, you know, people went crazy. Murder Mook out of fucking nowhere. Goes like, yo, I hate this shit. You black. You Puerto Rican, right? You black. That's it. It's over. You can say it. And then he goes into this whole story mode of how he got white friends around his circle saying the n-word and he's cool with it because they grew up around black people and i'm like wait the fucking minute hold up if you're giving this white woman a pass because she had she's half puerto rican in puerto rican it's it's not you know it's not a race sometimes it's not a race you know what i'm saying but she's half puerto rican right but she's claiming white for all the way white all the way uh, she shouldn't be getting a pass regardless. You feel what I'm saying? She shouldn't be getting a pass. I don't know about none of your white friends. First of all, I'm talking to Mook right now. Listen, bro. I don't know none of your your white friends who, who say the N-word. I wouldn't feel comfortable with, with people that who are white saying the N-word. You know what I'm saying? Mind you, I had an episode a while back about... You know, should Latin people say the N word and all that? There's a big difference. You feel what I'm saying? 
you got some wild light white white looking you know uh, latin people who you can see you know their skin yeah they're white you know what i'm saying but like like phenotypically they they don't look white you, you could tell that they're ethnic you know what i'm saying they get treated as such so those are the people i'm like all right you know whatever but nah yes jules you could tell she's anglo as shit you feel what i'm saying she's anglo as hell there's nothing ethnic about her nothing whatsoever there's nothing ethnic about her and murder Mook is giving a pass to this chick yo so who else are you giving the pass to now if it, it kind of tells me that these white dudes that you give a pass to say the n-word is not really saying the n-word in the same context you say the n-word you feel me it kind of seems to me that these white people are kind of saying it to make fun of you to test you a little bit you feel what i'm saying i'm gonna give you guys a personal story so um as you guys know I, I listen i grew up saying the n-word like that was like the second i probably the second word I, I ever said growing up you know what i'm saying my first word was mom my se the second word was you know what i'm saying because i grew up around you know grew up around the hood you know i grew up in the hood I'm fucking around i grew up in the hood so um i remember having this one job right i remember having this one job and for some reason let me give you guys another backstory for some reason i could never have white friends ever it's not something i wanted to have it's just something that i noticed i'm like oh shit whenever i interact with white people there's never that click you know what i'm saying there's never that camaraderie you know there's never that that mutual mutual like yo we could kick it you know that feeling that you get like yo i i feel you you know what i'm saying there was never that click you know what i'm saying but that only happened with white people everybody else there was a click but with white people it wasn't i don't know maybe i thought it was just me or whatever the case is and all that so i had this job right and i had a white co-worker you know but he was one of these white co-workers that thought that he was down you know what i'm saying thought that he was down because he lived in the bad part of upstate new york or some shit like he thought that he's seen it all you feel what i'm saying all right whatever bro so he goes you know me, like one time me and him are talking right you know he's one he's a, he's one of these weird white boys that i'm like hey what's up bro he you know he he talks a lot you know he talks too much for his own good you know what i'm saying so all right what up bro you know me and him talking and all that blah 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 right and he just you know he, he's a super liberal you know he he votes for you know he voted for obama and all that other bullshit so he comes out super liberal i know the rights and the struggles and all this other bullshit right one time you know he's just right next to being all that right and then the conversation like gets into like what if autism for example oh um what ha what if you know this happens during we work uh, during our work shift or whatever the case is oh yeah you know like you know st stuff like that right then um it started getting a little goofy you know what i'm saying and then he goes oh if this happens this is what your response is gonna be oh uh, yeah whatever my nigga and then i'm like what did he just so I just stopped and I paused a little bit and I said a couple of seconds went by. I was like, Hey, yo, bro, did you just use the N word? He's like, uh, what? I'm like, Br bro, did, did you use, did you just use the N word, bro? Uh, yeah, but I was just mocking you what you would say. Uh, bro, you, you still, you, you still, you know, you can't use that word, man. Oh, I didn't really, I would just using what you would say uh dude you you're white you can't use that word well i'm italian so uh um i don't really you know we we went through the same thing bro you're white you know you can't use that word man come on i thought you were an ally what's going on bro and 
You know what I'm saying? And then he, I, you know, he stopped. You know what I'm saying? And he never said it around me because I checked him. Now, years later, I was like, I'm thinking about it. And I'm like, wait a minute. What if I never checked him? You know, because I was early on that shit. Like, I wasn't really woke. You know what I'm saying? But I knew what I had enough sense to like, yo, my man, you can't really, you know, you feel what I'm saying? So I wasn't afraid to check him. I'm like, yo, bro, you can't really say that. You know you can't say that. And I'm thinking, like, yo, what if I would've never have checked him? If I would've never have checked him, I would just would've let it go. And he would've just said it around me. And he would've said it in different ways where it will mock me. You know what I'm saying? And me be like, oh, yeah, you said that. You know what I'm saying? It would've, it would've, it would've looked funny. You feel what I'm saying? And that's the thing. Just because we become cool with certain people doesn't mean that they have all the rights. Remember, you have to really check these people out here to actually see if they're an ally or not. You feel what I'm saying? They might come across being an ally, but remember, they still have the benefits and privileges that we don't have. You feel what I'm saying? So you really gotta, really gotta, you know, see test the waters you know what i'm saying but yeah that that's my thoughts on this whole murder mook just just jewels shit yo murder mook really went off the deep end with that he started cooning hard bro yo he started cooning really hard and i wasn't feeling that shit i was not feeling that shit whatsoever i'm like my man you don't really have to go hard like that b it's not that serious who you who you tap dancing to, bro? You feel what I'm saying? But yeah, this is that this is the shit. I I wasn't feeling that shit. You know what I mean? Um. So the second thing I want to talk about is this whole college scandal thing. For those who don't know, 50 people have been indicted on this whole college scandal thing. Actually, you know what? I'll do a disservice. Guys, just listen to this. Today, Oscar-nominated actor Felicity Huffman and Full House actor Lori Laughlin were arrested. And they are just two of the 32 parents, including Laughlin's husband and other wealthy and influential people, criminally charged in a massive college admission scandal involving 50 people across six states. At its center was a criminal enterprise, according to prosecutors, which employed cheating and bribery to get the children of well-paying parents into elite schools. The alleged ringleader, William Singer, the head of the college prep business, has pleaded guilty to all counts, including racketeering, conspiracy, and he is among several defendants who are cooperating with federal prosecutors. The defendants of today's indictments included two standardized test administrators, a test proctor, and more than a dozen coaches at elite schools. Now, they were accused of taking part in a scheme that included, quote, facilitating cheating on the ACT and SAT exams in exchange for bribes, arranging for a third party to secretly take the exams in place of the actual students or to replace the students' exam responses, and designating applicants as purported recruits for competitive college athletic teams in exchange for bribes. Today, Singer, part of his Facebook page shown here, admitted in court that parents paid $25 million over eight years to bribe university coaches to designate the students as athletes. Then there are the parents who prosecutors say knowingly participated in the scam. They're charged with conspiracy to commit mail fraud and honest services mail fraud. And prosecutors say they knew exactly what they were doing. Quote, cooperating witness one met with Huffman and her spouse in their Los Angeles home and explained in substance how the college entrance exam scheme worked. Huffman's spouse, actor William H. Macy, was not charged today. She, however, is accused of paying $15,000 to facilitate cheating on behalf of one of her daughters. As to the universities, none were charged today, but the roster of schools that were duped includes Yale, Stanford, and USC. Prosecutors describe how parents were walked through the fraud, for example, submitting a photo of someone other than their child as part of a ruse to say their child was athletic, to go hand in hand with the bribing of coaches. Damn, that's crazy. Oh my God, that's insane. And this is, this is white, privilege at its finest this is white privilege at its finest 
This has nothing to do with people having money and all this. Money just made it easy. That's all it is. But how low of a bar are you to the point where you have to actually bribe your way in to an institution? You know what I'm saying? How how stupid can you be? This and these are the same people. These are the same people who are saying that, well, you guys are getting handouts. You know what I'm saying? These are the same people saying that, well, pull up from your bootstraps. What is wrong? Don't get you guys want everything handed to you. These are the same people. You feel what I'm saying? Now they're just, you know, bribing officials left and right, paying themselves into college and all this other stuff. You feel what I'm saying? And the thing is that they say that, yo, these people didn't even lie. They said that the kids didn't know nothing about it, right? The kids didn't know shit. They didn't know nothing about it. But yet, um, and, and, and part of the indictment, one parent said that their daughter was part of the volleyball team and all that. The girl said she never even seen a volleyball in her life. The other guy, um, the, uh, there's other part of an indictment where the kid, um, they said that he's actually 6'2 and he was the lead of his basketball team, but yet he was 5'5 and he wasn't even athletic whatsoever. You know what I'm saying? But these just things just kept on going on. No, you're white. Ah, whatever it is, what it is. And the thing, the thing is, this is, this is something where I'm really questioning. Does it really stop in college? Let's think about that for one second. Do you guys really think this whole thing stops in college? Let's think about that for one second. Okay. The majority of the dominant society who are white go and pay their way into college. And then when they get out, these same people who are not educated whatsoever, who have been given everything to them, land multi-million dollar type of jobs and ventures. You know what I'm saying? Huh? Do you guys really think it stops at college? No, they probably pay their way into jobs. You feel what I'm saying? They probably did the, did the same thing that they did in college to go into jobs. And the thing is, I don't believe that these kids didn't know nothing about this shit. All right. I don't believe that whatsoever because you got white kids out here. So, so cocky about who they know. My father's a judge. You know what I'm saying? My mother's a lawyer, bruh. All right. You know what I mean? They're so adamant and, and, and proud of who they know and shit. I don't believe that whatsoever. I don't believe that they knew. These people know. But this is a system of white supremacy at work. This is the same system of white supremacy that tells you, no, we'll tell you what is racist and what is not, even though it's straight up in your face. This is a system of white supremacy that's protecting these kids saying, no, you didn't know nothing about it. Uh, yes, I did. No, you didn't. No, 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 you didn't. You didn't know nothing about it. Yeah, yeah, I did. I, I knew everything about it. No, no, you, we say you didn't know anything about it. You feel what I'm saying? I don't believe that they were clueless. Nah, not whatsoever. When it comes to protecting white people, I don't believe that they were clueless whatsoever. But yet, this is crazy because these people actually ended up taking a spot for somebody who really needed it who really needed it there was a study that came out not too long ago that said that african kids outperform white american students academically in all levels how crazy is that academically in all levels and these kids over here are, are paying instructors to cheat on them for the test and all that. You know what I'm saying? To give them answers and and not even take the test just to show up and they already know what answers what. You know what I mean? These people 
are giving everything to them. And these same people are the same ones who tell us, hey, it's not that bad. Hey, there's an equal playing field. Why are you complaining? Just pull yourself up from your bootstraps. It's fine. You feel what I'm saying? These are the same people who tell us this shit. But yet, you know, everything is handed to them. Everything they don't even have to work for. While you're at your janitor job, while you at your driving job, while you're at a job where it's labor intensive, you got the boss who's telling you what to do, who just literally got handed that job that doesn't know anything from a screw to oil telling you what to do. And I bet you a hundred dollars, you know, way more than he does. You know what I'm saying? That's some shit that, but then again, that goes again, white supremacy at play. This is nothing new. This is nothing, um, you know, over the top. This is white supremacy at play. The thing is that it's just been revealed and turned back into itself. That's all. That's all it is. And the thing is how this whole thing unraveled was actually by an accident. The funny thing is that that's what exactly what happened. This whole thing actually unraveled because of an accident. The FBI was actually investigating a pump and dump scheme and then ended up stumbling onto this. They were like, oh, what the fuck? What is all this shit? Wait a minute. And guess what? The head person, the head dude, the HNIC, you know, the head dude in charge and all that. They went to him first. He ended up snitching. He ended up singing like a bird. Tweet, tweet. You know what I'm saying? He ended up singing like a bird. Yeah, all of this shit happened. Yeah, all about that. Yeah, and all of this. He started singing. And then all these other people ended up getting locked up. Isn't that fucking funny? Ain't that shit fucking funny? And the thing is about um the the guy snitching on everybody my man started wearing wires and all that my man started participating and all that and guess what while all these people are being indicted and going to court he's gonna be the the state's prime witness you feel what i'm saying he's gonna be the one snitching on everybody wow that's some convenient ass shit, isn't it? How convenient is that? Wow. How convenient is fucking that? Word. So this is something that we really got to, you know, really put an eye on and, 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 and check out because these white people are out here throwing money left and right, left and right, left and right. But telling you, yo, you got to really, you know, you gotta really pull up from your bootstrap. Stop complaining and all this other shit. You know what I'm saying? That's some shit. You feel me? But now I'm going to move um, to something else, but it's not really the main topic, but it actually plays a part to the main topic. Steve Bannon has a movie coming out. Well, like a documentary coming out. And the thing is, for those who don't know who Steve Bannon is, Steve Bannon is, Steve Bannon is a white supremacist, confirmed white supremacist. How do we know he's a confirmed white supremacist? He admitted it, saying that he's part of the alt-right. He has a news organization called Breitbart, and he said that Breitbart is part of the alt-right. His words, his admission, I'm not taking nothing out of context. That's exactly what he said. So Steve, ba Steve white supremacist Bannon, right? Who's also been a, um, ad ad uh, was advisor for the white house for Donald Trump. You know, Donald Trump, he's a top white supremacist out here, you know? Um, and he revolves around himself with a other white supremacists like Jeff Sessions. Steve Bannon, 
you know, all these other people, David Duke, Alex Jones, uh, you know, allegedly, I suspect Alex Jones to be a white supremacist. I suspect him, but whatever. He revolves around all these top white supremacists out here. You know what I'm saying? And and Trump even said, "Listen, I'm a nationalist." You know, we come on. He he's an idiot, but he's not that much of an idiot. All right, he he perfects code words. He perfects code words. That's a nod at white supremacists saying, "Listen, I'm your guy." You know what I'm saying? There's a reason why a lot of white supremacists are out here caping and lauding Donald Trump. There's a reason for that. He's their man. He said it himself. His whole campaign was based on the white supremacy. All right. So Steve Bannon has a documentary coming out. And for those who don't know, his documentary that's coming out. I, I really, to tell you the truth, I don't even know when it's coming out. I just found it extremely interesting, but his documentary film, whatever the case is, it's coming out and it's called the brink really, really interesting uh, title for, uh, for a documentary, the brink, hmm. the brink from what, you know what I'm saying? The brink from what? But if we actually watch the trailer, and I got the trailer up, it's actually extremely, extremely, extremely interesting. And I'm going to play the trailer for you guys right now. In 1862, Lincoln said, they wish to get rid of me, and I am sometimes half disposed to gratify them. We are now on the brink of destruction. It appears to me the Almighty is against us, and I can hardly see a ray of hope. If I had not come as the CEO of the campaign, Trump would not have won. And that's a fact. The White House, there's no glamour to the job at all. I hated every second I was there. God damn it. Just stay focused. I'm on a mission to convert as many people as possible. You are part of a worldwide movement. Take out the sword and throw away the scabbard. I'm gonna get so crushed in this film. This is what I've done for 40 years. How you doing? Hey. Every nationalist party that looks viable, I'm trying to help. The key point is immigration. Islam. So-called refugees. The real battle yeah. isn't in Washington. This is a huge revolt our states. It's time for action. Yes. It's a global revolt. What did I just watch? Are you now consulting for the national rally party? In your point. <laughs> Some of the people you're doing business with here in Europe are connected to neo-fascism. Energizing hate, hate black people, hate Muslims, it's not right. I actually thought I was doing the Lord's work. Who is funding this group? You're doing dog whistle anti-Semitism here. People find it deeply offensive. Just because you state it doesn't mean it's true. Right. I'm about one thing. I'm about winning. All right. Intensive, isn't it? <laughs> Extreme, like, whoa, a lot of shit's going on at once. Um, I don't know if you guys caught the cold words from this fat racist piece of fuck, but there was something very interesting that I caught that I want to replay just very quickly. I'm on a mission to convert as many people as possible. You are part of a worldwide movement. Take out the sword and throw away the scabbard. So if you guys caught that, I am on a mission to convert as many people as possible. Wow. Hmm. I wonder what he means by that. You're part of a worldwide movement. Hmm. I wonder what he means by that. My people, let's be completely honest right now. White supremacy as is in a global, global, powerful, 
dangerous level right now. Let's be completely honest with ourselves and let's not hide from it. There's a lot of, of people, a lot of us know about it. We know what's going on, but we don't like to talk about it. We don't like to admit it. We don't like to even say the word white supremacy because we might offend somebody. Let's call it what the fuck it is. It's white supremacy supremacy it's to the point that they're being so scared because their numbers are actually dwindling their numbers are actually going down that's the reason why they're scared about immigration white genetic survival and all this other bullshit that movie right there that documentary right there let's not be confused that's gonna be looked at that's gonna be seen that's gonna be viewed as an admission as a way to actually start being converted a lot more. Yes, it might be a critical piece. That film might make him look stupid, but let's not get it twisted. A lot of people that don't know about him, a lot of people that don't think that his views aren't that radical, isn't that crazy, isn't that out there, they're gonna see that documentary and actually, See the good part of it. Saying like, you know what? He isn't that batshit insane. There is some genetic genes um, white genocide that's going on here. I do see his point. Let's not get confused here, okay? Let's not get confused here. Now, that man held a very powerful position in the White House. The fact that he's not there no more does not mean that those ideas, those ideologies are not being practiced right now in that house, in the White House, okay? Let's not get it confused. The fact that he has a movie coming out and he's saying these little cold words, these, you're part of a global movement. What movement? White supremacy. White supremacy is a global movement. This is something we have to be real about. This is something we have to say and not forget. Yes, there's some of us that's scared. Yes, there's some of us that don't want to admit it, but we have to face the facts and we have to face reality. We are not white. We will never be white regardless of how many times we want to even go with those type of people and put down in the census and put down on worksheets and all this, it's not going to happen, okay? And the fact that those people, those real white supremacists, those real terrorists are seeing us not as white people. We're getting our wake up call, people. My Latin people, we're getting our wake up call. We're getting the door kicked in and shown our real true colors of what they see us. We're other, okay? Let's not get it confused. We are other, all right? By the simple fact that this movie is coming out that he, they have little sprinkled code words all over the place. I am planning a nationwide movement and all this, uh, come on. Come, this is this is not out of coincidence. This is not out of coincidence. Whenever you put a movie trailer out, whenever you put a movie trailer out, there's a message you put, uh, you, you're bringing on the cross. There's a message. If you're making some people look stupid, you make the trailer look a little wonky, little you know, a little circusy and all this other stuff. If you wanna be extremely critical. You, you put, you know, you make it look critical, make it look real serious. This, this is propaganda. This right here, this is gonna boost him up. This has nothing to do with questioning his beliefs or whatever the case is. This is gonna make him look like, he's the hero here. He's the hero. He's the hero here. And don't be surprised if there's probably gonna be a news article or something of that movie actually being played in the White House, like, uh, you know, 
like the 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 first time uh, a KKK movie was, I think, what Birth of a Nation. Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised because that ideology, that ideology, that movie right there, leads me into my main topic. What happened in New Zealand? What happened in New Zealand? That right there leads to my name, my main topic, white supremacy in a global scale. These people are not playing around. They're serious. These people are not playing around. They're for real. They are out here to harm us. They have an ideology stronger than your own. They see this as a religion. They see this as genetic survival. Why is it genetic survival? I'm going to break it down. But what happened in New Zealand? First of all, let me just say what happened in New Zealand is horrible. Thoughts and prayers go out to those families. But what happened in New Zealand is another example of white supremacy, right? What happened in New Zealand was this white supremacist going in there and being a martyr for his cause, for his religion of white supremacy. He wrote down the 80 page manifesto. He wrote down the whole 80 page manifesto. And in that manifesto was extremely interesting. I'm actually going to play a clip of that manifesto. That's later on. But I want you guys to remember one thing. The reason why white supremacists are scared about white genocide is because of diversity. Diversity is equally to black. That's basically what it is. Let's keep it 100% real. Diversity equals to black. They do not want their offsprings to be black. That's all it is. They want to keep a white ethno state. Okay? They want to keep a white ethno state. Now, whenever this is this goes psychologically, it goes really deep. All right? Whenever a black person or anybody with color, with pigment, with melanin, all right? This goes to Latin people too. Let's not get it twisted. We're not white. Look at your hands. We're not white. All right? So anybody with pigment, with color, when they have sex with a white person, that offspring is automatically going to come out that color. All right? Regardless if they're... If they're white, white woman or white male, regardless, that offspring is going to come out that color. They're going to come out ethnic, regardless. Why? Because our genes are stronger. Our ethnic gene, our genes that gives us melanin is stronger. This is scientifically proven. This is not even a fallacy, okay? This is scientifically proven. There's studies out there that says that black people's organs are way stronger and work way better than other people's, you know, organs or whatever the case is. You know what I'm saying? So let's not get it twisted. There's a reason for all of this. So when, when, when black people were getting lynched, the first thing that they would cut off is the penis. Why? Because that's a symbol right there. That, the penis right there is a symbol of their whole genetic annihilation. And this is what they feared. Dylan Roof even said it. This guy, the New Zealand shooter who shot up two mosques, he said it. He knows exactly what it was. This is genetic annihilation. You feel what I'm saying? Now, I'm going to let you guys listen to some short clips, and we're going to break this down, all right? At least 49 people were killed in mass shootings Friday at two New Zealand mosques. The mosques were full of worshippers attending Friday prayers. The attacks were carried out by a suspect intent on killing who had written a rambling manifesto. 
The gunman, who has not been publicly named, is a 28-year-old Australian. He says he is a white nationalist who hates immigrants. His 74-page manifesto was posted to social media, and he live-streamed his assault at the mosque. The suspect said he was angry about attacks in Europe that were perpetrated by Muslims, and he wanted revenge and to create fear. His writings also included a single reference to President Donald Trump, calling Trump a symbol of renewed white identity and common purpose. Condemnation of the attack came in swiftly from the White House and from around the world. President Trump tweeted his condolences, and the White House issued a statement denouncing the vicious act of hate. You guys caught that? Denouncing the vicious act of hate. Remember, that's the White House saying what they, what they said. Not Donald Trump. But best believe, they asked Donald Trump what he thought about it. And this is what he said. Do you see today white nationalism as a rising threat around the world? I don't really. I think it's a uh, small group of people that have very, very serious problems. I guess if you look at what happened in New Zealand, perhaps that's a case. I don't know enough about it yet. They're just learning about the person and the people involved. Uh, but it's a, certainly a terrible thing, terrible thing. So let's bring in Terry. Tonight, uh, New Zealand's prime minister is now responding to what the president has said. And even the FBI here at home has been quite clear on this. No question, David. The prime minister responded. She made clear she disagrees with President Trump. And as you say, the FBI, counterterrorism experts, law enforcement around the world, they would disagree too. The FBI says that hate crimes rose 17 percent in this country in 2017. And they also say, counterterrorism experts, that extremist related killings, 70 percent of them were committed by members of the far right or white supremacist movements in the United States over the last decade. And in Western Europe, the threat of terrorism by the far right is on the rise, too. It's real and it is growing. Wow. So every opportunity he gets to denounce anything that has to do with white supremacy. Nah, it is what it is. Nah, I don't think it's that big of a deal. It's just a small group of people. But yet your own government is saying that that's not true. Your own government is saying that, uh, bro, listen, ever since you got into office, these people has been rising. There's actually more numbers now than it has ever been. You feel what I'm saying? He, come on, we got, we got to stop trying to let have these white supremacists admit they're white supremacists. Let's stop having that happen. You feel what I'm saying? Let's stop having that happen. When are we going to learn that we don't need them to admit that? You feel what I'm saying? We don't need them to admit that. A few, a few clues here and there. That's it. That's all I need. You know what I'm saying? But this New Zealand attack, what, you know, confirmed white supremacists and why he did it and all this other stuff. And I'm going to break all that down. I want to let you guys listen to his manifesto and what he had to say. Brenton Tarrant, the terrorist who shot up a New Zealand mosque, posted this 74-page manifesto. Now, the manifesto is dangerous, but we are sharing some of his thoughts here so that viewers can have an insight into what fuels hate. Firstly, Tarrant describes himself as, quote, a regular white man from a regular family who decided to take a stand to ensure a future for my people. He described his people as ethnically and culturally European. He says that he wants to protect the European identity, culture, and race from multiculturalism and lists declining birth rates among whites as proof that they will eventually be eradicated. He gives many reasons for the attack, namely to, quote, show the invaders that our lands will never be their lands. Our homelands are our own. The invaders he is talking about here are legal immigrants who he sees as a threat to white existence. Now, let's not forget that this man is Australian and committing an attack in New Zealand. These are both former British colonies and have no ethnic or cultural European history before British colonists arrived at their shores less than 250 years ago. He says that he targeted the Muslim community because they were, quote, an obvious, visible, and large group of invaders from a culture with higher fertility rates, higher social trust, and strong, robust traditions that seek to occupy my people's lands and ethnically replace my own people. Tarrant also says, quote, we must ensure the existence of our people and a future for white children, as well as saying, 
that this crisis of mass immigration and sub-replacement fertility is an assault on the European people that, if not combated, will ultimately result in the complete racial and cultural replacement of the European people. Many white nationalists and ethno-staters fear that as more immigrants come to their countries, they will become a minority. Tarrant even has a full page devoted to how, quote, it's never wise to become a minority group, where he says, in every country, on every continent, those that are in the minority are oppressed. If you become a social, political, or ethnic minority, it will always lead to your oppression. He refers to legal immigrants as invaders, says that they should be prevented from reaching adulthood. Murdering children, he says, will, quote, show them the risk of bringing their offspring to our soil. And then, he says, they will avoid our lands. Now, if you think there's any doubt that he's telling others to kill kids, check this out. Children of invaders do not stay children. Any invader you kill, of any age, is one less enemy your children will have to face. He claims to represent millions of Europeans and other ethno-nationalists, and claims that ethno-nationalists like himself number in the hundreds of thousands and are concentrated in jobs like the European Armed Forces and National Police Forces. He has called for other attacks to take place and has given details on how best to carry them out. Things that I won't go into detail here, but just know that he wants to spawn copycat attacks around the world. He lists three specific political targets in his manifesto, specifically singling out German Chancellor Angela Merkel, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, and London Mayor Sadiq Khan. Interestingly enough, he says, quote, the person that has influenced me above all was Candace Owens. Owens is an African-American conservative who's known for her anti-Black Lives Matter and pro-Trump views. Though he has to, quote, disavow some of her beliefs, the extreme actions she calls for are too extreme even for my tastes. The last takeaway from this is that in the aftermath of this terrorist attack, some politicians and pundits are doubling down on their Islamophobic rhetoric. Most notably at the moment is the far-right Australian Senator Fraser Anning, who just hours after the attack released this statement saying, quote, the real cause of the bloodshed on New Zealand streets today is the immigration program which allowed Muslim fanatics to migrate to New Zealand in the first place. <clears throat> All right, my people, you guys heard that. He wants a white ethno. All right, let's start breaking shit down, okay? Part of his manifesto, he says that he hates invaders. This motherfucker's from Australia. He's in New Zealand. He's a goddamn invader his damn self. You feel what I'm saying? But it doesn't really matter because we're talking about the religion of white supremacy. What? The religion of white supremacy has no borders. It has no laws. Only one. Keep everything white and kill everything that doesn't. That's it. That's basically it. You know what I'm saying? So he's an invader himself, you know, and to truthfully be honest, they re white people, white supremacists, they don't have no land besides Europe, everything else they take. What is their culture? Let's really break down. What is their culture? What's their culture besides stealing, lying and killing? What's their culture? Let's completely be honest right now. What the fuck is their culture? If y'all know, tell me. You know what I'm saying? What? Eating mayonnaise all night? You know what I'm saying? What is their culture? Let me know. Because their culture can be quantitatively defined. They don't have no culture besides pillaging, raping, and killing. You know what I'm saying? And taking everything that there's, that's theirs. That's I'm, my, my fault. Taking everything that's not theirs and calling it theirs. You know what I'm saying? So what is their culture? You feel what I'm saying? So he's talking about invaders and the whole immigrant thing. Here we go again. Immigrant, 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 immigrant. Let's keep it at 110 right now. This word immigrants is supposed to be anybody non-white. Let's keep it a hundred. All right. The, I even debunked that whole immigration thing in the United States. All right. I debunked all of that, but immigration in the United States, the majority are Asian and Europeans feel what I'm saying, but they really harp on anybody that's non-white and when they talk about immigrant, that's what that's what they care about. Because remember what he just said in his manifesto. 
their you know fertility rates are high that means they have a lot of children and they're very fertile you guys look this up you guys could see that the fertility rate of white people is going down a lot of white males are losing sperm counts a lot of women's eggs aren't working right they got a lot of sits sits in their ovaries and all that if you guys really look into it the fertility rate on white people is going down why you think there's having all these apocalypse movies out of nowhere you know what i'm saying but he really cares about this fertility rate and harming children non-white children why you think this police officer is just killing kids left and right there's a reason for that and he even said it we're in uh, military and police stations and all this other crazy shit in government you feel what i'm saying e? and th th there's something that the fbi been told us white supremacist organizations have infiltrated law enforcement that's it it's something we already know but they're there this is where they're confessing everything you know he's a martyr he's confessing everything and this is what we're breaking down the religion of white supremacy why on earth do you believe in this religion so much so cold heartedly because they're that's the, that's the only thing that they have their race whenever you see white people who are gay they don't give a fuck about gay people they're white first and then they're gay second women they're white first they're women second you know what i'm saying this is how they think their race is everything why because everything is handed to them they don't want to be a minority even though socially no actually um you know through numbers not socially but through numbers they actually are a minority but the simple fact of being you know oppressed the simple fact of being downtrodden the simple fact that they are getting discriminated against they cannot handle it they cannot we could take all type of hits and kicks now nah, you shut the fuck up all right you know what i'm saying it happens to them oh no wait a minute hold up we can't be you heard his you heard his manifesto we cannot be a minority you know what i'm saying that's gonna be the oppression of my people you feel what i'm saying that is some shit that is some shit we cannot be a minority holy fuck so it's cool if we stay a minority you know what i'm saying it's cool that we start you know being oppressing all that nice no, it's, it's cool when they do it you know what i'm saying but when we want to get that same oppression yo let's let's start spraying this oppression game all around nah now i gotta start killing folks now i gotta start showing out now i gotta start showing my power you know what i'm saying and the thing is white supremacy is it's alive and well because they didn't shoot this man down they didn't you know take him handcuff him and shoot him in the back he didn't run and and he got nah they take them they took him in alive they took him in alive and the thing is the thing is about that the thing is they took him in alive and guess what he went into court and started showing little white supremacist hand signal the okay signal the okay symbol start showing little white supremacist hand sing uh, signals remember these are the same hand signals the okay symbol that they that these people say oh no this is not a white supremacist hand signal and richard spencer ended up admitting yeah it is it's a white supremacist hand signal yeah it is you feel what i'm saying these are the same people you know what i mean let's not get it twisted my people let's not get it twisted we're at war okay we're at war these people are going to be showing out all right we gotta stay protected we gotta stay mobilized we gotta go around with each other and actually help each other out we got more power in numbers than they do all right now with that being said i'm gonna catch you guys later remember hit me up on instagram and twitter at the same name radical underscore latino underscore and i'm gonna catch you guys later Peace.